In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a really basic look at object for the character to follow that links to the camera that's part of the UT motion controller. There's lots of different ways you can do this. You could be using Final IK, you could use Unity's look at solver, you use a lot of different things, but this is just one way to do it. All right, so something I like to do for her, for giving her a look at controller is that I like to put it for this specific setup inside the camera rig that runs with this um, OT motion control setup. And this allows me to use the actual direction of my view to tell her where to look. I could also grab it and move it around, but it keeps it aligned with the camera. So I'm going to create a quick game object and we'll make it a, I guess we'll make it a sphere for this time. We'll put it at zero, put it at 0.25, point, uh, actually let's do 0.5, 0 0.5 0 so it's nice and big and we can see it. And then what I do is I'll parent it inside of here. We can put it, yeah, we'll put it by the main camera put it up, I'll put it in front of her, we'll scale it down a bit more, there we go. And I'm going to make this a, a look at object. So, so, so what should happen is when I start directing her, you see that that sphere is following my camera around. So what I'll be able to do with this is actually use it as something that guides how she's looking. So the sphere's popped up, so I think the camera actually moves up in space when we, um, go into the actual move mode. Let me just put this in the camera rig and see what that does. Okay, so it still follows. Okay, so we'll put it into the camera. And I know that the camera pops up a little bit, so we'll just adjust it until it feels right. So I'm gonna go into the scene. Let's have a look where that ball is. It's a little bit high, so we wanna get it down to negative 0.5. I know there's probably better ways to do this. I'm not a Unity expert in any way. So there's an automatic offset built into the camera. Okay. All right, great. So let's set this up as a look at object for her. By the time we're done with her, there's gonna be a lot of stuff on her. So let's add a look at IK. So we'll grab her head root. You don't have to use final IKs. One, we've, we're just grabbing one here. So we're going to be using all her spine, her neck, and her head. So let's put her head in there. So we'll go here and we'll just lock this. Okay, and then let's put her head in there. Bonk. Here it is. And let's do her spine now. So we'll do neck C, neck B. Neck A, and then we want to add her spine C, spine B, and, oh sorry, whoops, I just did that one, we'll do spine A, there we go. Let's see if this actually works. So now you can see that she's actually looking around. So the only thing we want to adjust is the weight curve, which I think should be a little more like that. Her head should move a lot and the rest of her should move very little. Okay, and then let's change the body weight to 0.25, head weight to 0.8, I guess. Let's try that. Okay, that feels a little better. So maybe we'll put her head at one, her head weight at one, because we don't have eyes on this character. There, now she can look around. And she's sort of using her body, she's moving a little bit, but it's not too much to, to be distracting. But using this method, we can now give the character a little bit of intention. And while it doesn't play accurately down her whole body, it does allow us to, see? It does give us some extra control over her to do some do some nice things with her. So if she's moving up this hill and we want her to stop and kind of look over and look around. The movement, especially with his mouse, isn't ideal because I'm using kind of a roll ball mouse. So it's gonna have that feel to it, but it is something we can use to just help direct the scene and puppeteer the character and record it. And then what we can do is we can actually, once we've recorded this, 
this animation, we can use it back in the scene, and it's actually really neat. So, okay, so we've added these little controls to this character. Um, so I guess what we can demonstrate is, is actually using them. So I'm just going to speed through all of this that I did since we've seen it before. And if you haven't seen this process before, check out some of the earlier videos. So what I'm doing here is I've tweaked the animation on the Unity timeline and re-exported it. So I put a scene tracker on her and re-exported the animation and brought it into Maya. So you can see that I've got the skeleton here. I'm redefining the skeleton, fixing some of the missing definitions that seem to come in and readjusting the way that the HIK is solving for the character. So nothing major there. And just getting rid of some of those roll joint problems that we had before. Again, if you haven't seen that, check out some of the earlier videos. And then here, what I've done is I fixed the look at controller because I didn't really like it. So I didn't like the results. So I went back in and re-recorded and then exported the animation, imported it again, and deleted the mesh, and it automatically updated the rigs animation. I didn't have to do any new binding or anything. The animation came right in on top of the previous animation and just replaced it. So I guess in some ways that could be good, in other ways that could be bad, but it's a really nice way to work if you wanna update a scene. You don't really have to go through the whole process again. You just record it and re-import your FBX and it will replace everything. So ultimately, I think I got a pretty decent looking scene and it's something I can start tweaking and playing with for the actual film.